Welcome to the Nevada Economics Podcast, where we bring together experts to discuss economic issues facing Nevada and the Western United States. We are sponsored by the University of Nevada Extension and the University Center for Economic Development. I am your host, Bob Conrad. On today's show, we sit down with economist Eugenia Larmore. Eugenia provides economic analyses for businesses and government agencies in Northern Nevada. Please welcome Eugenia. I'm a Reno-based economist. My company specializes in fiscal and economic feasibility and market studies in the area. Um, so essentially what I, what I call it is we measure change. We predict what's going to happen, what has happened, and we try to define where Reno and Northern Nevada is going. And where is that going? You know, as, as somebody very smart recently said, we're, um, based on the data we're seeing is we're driving a car. We were driving a car at 100 miles an hour. We're about 60 miles an hour. But the car is still moving, and it's still moving well. So a little bit of a slowdown in that growth, but by no means are we stopped or are we moving backwards. Great. And so we, I should mention, too, we're recording this in the middle of November. So for those who might be listening to this down the road, that's... Uh, the timeline that we're looking at. So we're heading into 2020. What what else can you say about that? Um, well, we have a, a leading index for Reno Sparks that we maintain. We update it monthly. We're obviously a little behind on the data because it takes a while for the data to be released. So we're looking at September numbers, but September numbers are telling us that the index compared to the month before grew 39%. So things are the the number of um, in, uh, series that we're looking at, all of them are increasing with the exception, small exceptions. I'd like to talk about that separately. But compared to last year, same time in September of last year, we're 1.7% uh, up. So again, there, there's very positive growth. It's a leading index. So we're expecting this to continue over the next about six to 12 months. Of course, as economists, we, there's always a caveat, barring any kind of economic, political, or anything that we're not predicting at this point. Yeah, we've talked a lot on this podcast about tariffs, for example, and uh, how that can also impact us pretty drastically. Um, so we don't we kind of maybe are still feeling that out a little bit. Absolutely. We're, we haven't seen any significant economy-wide impacts of the tariffs. And a lot of it is because it is still up in the air. I don't think there's really been, we've seen some impacts on individual industries, individual companies, but not really an economic significant slowing because of that. Great. So you mentioned some exceptions. What are, what are those? We've seen for actually for most months in 2019, we've seen gaming revenue, um, taxable gaming, gaming revenue in Washoe County declining. This is corresponding to a decline in visitors to the area. Um, not a huge concern in that both visitorships and gaming are not as much a part of our economy as it was before. Of course, we're watching this visitors still spend money. Um, so it, it is a concern, but it's not what makes up the majority of our economy. So we're not significantly concerned about. And we're not concerned about it. Not only in, in the past, visitorship um, has indicated if people are not coming to the area, it's kind of a predictor for the recession. I think this time it's more preference kind of visitorships. You know, people maybe are not coming here to gamble because their gaming is now a commodity across the country. So more of a consumer behavior change rather than an economic indicator. How is this impacting housing at the moment? Uh, the, the visitorship or just the just growth? The, just the overall economy. Um, housing is demand for housing is still growing strongly, uh, both locally and across the country. There is shortages of housing and house prices rising across most major metro areas, and including Reno. Reno is has been growing tremendously. We grow our employment, and with the growth in employment comes growth and demand for housing. Okay, and you mentioned affordability might be uh, impacted. Absolutely, as I, I, I'm. You can't read an article in the area without seeing something dealing with affordability. And that's obviously an issue here as our prices have been driven up significantly with the demand for housing and with the lack of um, new supply keeping up with that demand. So while the prices are increasing, and the good news is we have a, a housing affordability index where we look at 
how much is the median family making in the area and how much house can they afford and compare that to what's the price of the homes. So we are seeing that the good news is in that the third quarter of 2019, the index actually went up slightly, which indicates that more home, more families in the area can afford to buy a medium price home. And this is because while prices are increasing strongly, con continuing to increase in the area, um, median family income is also increasing which means the families can afford maybe a little bit more. But more importantly, um, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate, which is what is included in our index, has gone down significantly, which while combined with the income and the lower rate, that means that families can afford more home, which increases affordability in the area. You mentioned that uh, families are, are making a little more money. What, what is that attributed to? Uh, wages. The, the wage growth has been significant in the area, um, especially with the with the growth of the employment in the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center. They, their wage is a lot higher than it is in Reno, and so it's it's lifting up that median income for the area. So we're starting to see not that we haven't necessarily in the past, but it sounds like we're starting to see some of the positive benefits of the, of the Gigafactory and some of those other uh, firms that are setting up shop out there. Correct. Our, our employment growth is, in the past, it was casino and entertainment industry. We relied heavily on, the, heavily on those industries. Actually, as a kind of an aside, in the past, um, gaming, rev or ga gaming employees were one of the highest employment sectors. We have gotten to the point where food and beverage has now recently, and the number of food and beverage employees has outpaced the gaming employees. So gaming, as I mentioned, is not is a, is a great part of our economy, but it's no longer a driver of our economy. So we're growing the professional services, the manufacturing, the logistics um, employment at, at the Tahoe, Cent the Tahoe um, Reno Industrial Center and across the area. We have a huge industrial growth in the entire area, and those come with higher wages than, than have been in the past. What else would you like to say about uh, some of the projections for the Reno area coming up in the next six months to a year? Um, I, I think we are just, I, I think we've touched uh, quite a bit on this. We are a much stronger economy than we were in the previous recession. A lot of the demand for homes, a lot of the growth in population was not driven by employment. It was driven I, I'm not sure anybody knew why people came here in such large numbers because the employment was there. Today, it is employment driven. Wages are increasing above inflation levels. Yes, we still have an affordability issue. Yes, we have a shortage of housing. But those are not at an individual level, but at an economic level, those are great problems to have. We have demand. People want to live here. People want to move businesses here. So that's, it, it may hurt the individuals, but we are much more solid than we've ever been. Kind of reading the tea leaves, it sounds like, should we hit a recession or a minor recession? Um, if I can summarize what, what I think I heard you say is that we're gonna be in a much better position to deal with that than we were 10 years ago. Correct. We, we really are. The, the economics behind us, our economy is much more diversified. We're not all gaming based. We have a wide diversity of the companies and the industries that are represented in the area. The, the kind of the, the small caveat, because again, economists, um, we have a lot of large um, international companies that are based in here that employ a lot of people. Should one of those companies go under, there, there's a little bit of a risk, but we have such demand for employment and not enough employees in the area that I think in the long term would be able to absorb that and not have a, a, a very strong significant negative impact. So as an economist, it sounds like you, you look more at sort of the big picture of a, of a community or a region, not so much as you mentioned the individual level. Is that fair to say? Uh, yes, it is. And you know, the numbers that we talk about, the affordability index, we talk about at the median level. There's always people at the bottom and there's always people at the top. So we, we look at, as you mentioned, the kind of the big picture. What is it looking like for the entire economy? Eugenia, where are we in terms of, you know, we're, we have a lot of big name tech companies in the area. So I think there's this assumption that we are a tech-based market, but really we, it seems to me we're doing a lot more like manufacturing and industrialization type stuff, a lot of warehouse type jobs. Can you speak to that a little bit? 
Correct. Uh, um, well, manufacturing and warehousing are they're defined as two different industries. But manufacturing in itself, um, through July of this year compared to July of 2018, gain, we gained 4,400 jobs in that sector. That is the highest number of jobs of any other sector in the area. Um, it's a 20.1% increase in employment. The, not only are we gaining these manufacturing jobs, the great news is the 2018 hourly wage for manufacturing, again, big picture on, the, on an average, was $25.39. The median uh, wage for all of the industries in the area, so representing everybody, is $22.78. So we almost a $3 difference there. So not only are we creating these highly sought after manufacturing jobs that if we want to get into multiplier effects, ideally would create suppliers and uh, customers and expand the economy through that kind of the ripple effect. Um, not only are we doing that, we're also these jobs have higher than average wages, as we talked about. The other one that's kind of related is professional business services. So those are your accountants and economists and it, the, the people who work for the manufacturing, the, the, not manufacturing, but the, who support these jobs through their services, they gained 4,500 uh, employees. So actually the highest number of employees gained by any industry. I, I think I misspoke saying it's, it's right behind professional services followed by manufacturing. But they increased by 14%, so a slow, lower percentage increase because there is more jobs to start with. But their their wages are also $25.41, so again, almost $3 higher. So again, we're that's where the, the income growth in the area is growing, is we're creating more of these high-paying jobs. So what about tech? Where are we... Well, it depends on how you define tech. Yes. Some of it, it could be in manufacturing. Um, the R&D for tech could fall under professional business services. Um, so the, that, that those two industries would capture that. Um, let's see. There's obviously, there's the information industry or sector. They only gain 29 or 20, um, nine employees, they have great wages at 33, almost $34 per hour, but we haven't gained a lot of people in that. And that's because some of these companies, you can classify Tesla as tech, but they're showing really at, as manufacturing. So it depends on what these companies are classified at and where we're seeing them pop up in that sector data. Any final thoughts that you would like to add? Um, just kind of an, an interesting um, in just going back to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, since that's really the, the hot topic, that's part of the growth that we're experiencing, they added 6,100 jobs in 2018. So a large portion of all of the jobs added last year was actually in the tiny little Story County where this large manufacturing center or tech center or however you want to define it, mm -hmm. industrial center is located. So, and their, their wages there are, they increased their wages by 4.1% and they're actually at $26 on average compared to about 22 in Washoe County. Wow, more than 6,000 jobs in 2018. Correct. That's pretty huge. It is. They're they're a very large player in the, in the region, and that's why when we look at data for the Reno area, we always include Story County because while a lot of those people live or work in Story County, they live and they impact Washoe County. So we look at it as a regional issue. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. The University Center for Economic Development was established in 1992 in response to the growing need within the state for economic development research, technical assistance, and educational services. Visit us online at www.unr.edu forward slash business. Then click on the Business Resources tab. Thank you for listening.